maintaining good coding standards important first and the foremost is consistency is the key whenever you are developing any kind of an application ensuring that you use proper naming conventions and the naming conventions uh, continue to remain the same throughout your program is going to be quite important um when you start following good coding standards your code is going to become easy to read and understand the important thing in this aspect is we have to make it easy for the people who are going to be maintaining the code in the future for us so you need to keep in mind when you start working at companies it doesn't mean that you are put onto one project and you will only be working on one project you might be moved into a project and you might be working on that particular project for a few months and then there would be then you might be moved into another project so when a new project is be you know, they've moved you into a new project there will be another person who's going to be replacing you and he's going to be sitting in your position continuing to develop that particular app so if you follow good coding standards it becomes easier for the person to maintain so the next person who comes to write code it becomes easier for him to uh, start off where you have left in terms of coding how many of you have heard about this programmer he is a very famous programmer his name is called as john wood have you heard of john wood in the past have you heard of john wood no okay so he is giving a life tip to all of us so the life tip is he says always code as if the guy who ends up maintaining your code will be a violent psychopath who knows where you live so this was a quote given by a very famous programmer in the early 90s right i think this is going to summarize the importance of writing clean code and uh, making it easier for the maintainer cool um while i'm writing code there are a few things that i generally keep in mind uh, these are some of the practices that i have adopted um and i would like to share what are the things that i keep in mind when i'm writing javascript code um i'm not talking from react perspective nor am i speaking from node perspective i'm just talking in general javascript right so the first is the first step is going to be use triple equals uh than rather than instead of using double equals you know that javascript has a triple equal that is a strict equality check over that of a equality check and you know while you're working with strict equals you're going to first verify the data type and then you're going to be comparing the value and this will also make you explicitly do proper data type conversions so there is something called as type conversion and there is also something called as a type coercion so type coercion is automatic converting of data types that is what type coercion means type conversion is where we are explicitly converting the data type and following the explicit nature is always good because you as a programmer have more control over the code and you're not letting the interpreter decide and uh, things like that so that's the first thing that i prefer to use use triple equals instead of using double equals so the second tip is use const as much as possible while you're writing code um use let when you're working with reassignments or while you're working with loops try to avoid var as much as possible as long as you're not working on a project that is requiring you to use legacy code that is let's say a project before es6 let's say the company has acquired the project before 2015 and they continue to use es5 only then you can properly prefer using es5 code instead stick to using const and let as much as possible const with respect to reassignment and uh, looping use the let keyword um you all know that uh, especially when it comes to naming convention several times i keep repeating this over and over uh, in the class while i'm looking at your code 
I keep mentioning this several times. So few things with respect to the naming conventions I want to speak to you all about. So the first one is while you're working with JavaScript, we know that we're going to be using camel casing instead of using snake case. Snake case is the one that you have an underscore between two words. Camel casing is let's say you have a variable called as uh, order line item. So this is basically camel case where the first word is going to be in all small letter. The second word, the first character is going to be in capital letter. So for what would I be using camel casing for? Maybe I can retain the variable name there. For your functions, use camel casing and also for your variable names, you can go on to use camel casing. Try avoiding using underscore that is called a snake case, which is not specific to JavaScript. We predominantly use snake casing in a language like Python, but with JavaScript, we use camel casing and also try, try to avoid having just like one word, something that looks like this, like don't do this order line item. Like it's like one word rather use camel casing here. You can see order line item. When it comes to Pascal casing and you know what Pascal casing is for, right? Every word is going to be capitalized. So for example, if I have a class called as um, let us say user profile. So I'll say user profile and you would want to use your Pascal casing um, while you're declaring your ES6 classes and also while you're going on to create ES5 constructor functions. So when you're doing ES6 classes and constructor functions, then use Pascal casing. What is Pascal case where every word is going to be capitalized, right? User U in capital P in capital. Okay, so this is some of the things that you need to keep in mind while going ahead. Uh, I think singular and plural, I keep, I keep mentioning this several times. Whenever you're working with an object, you can call it as singular. For example, I might have an object called as user or I might have an object called as employee. When I'm working with one item or one unit, I keep it singular whenever you're working with objects and use plural while you're working with arrays. For example, if I have an array of users, I'll call the variable as users or I'll call the variable as employees, right? Keep this in mind when it comes to using good naming conventions. The next one is use template strings or template literals over using string concatenation. Try avoiding using, try avoiding to use the plus operator because you know the plus operator behaves very differently in JavaScript. String plus string gives you an output of string. Number plus number, it gives you an output of number. String and a number gives you an output of a string once again. So whenever you want to build out a complex string, use the ES6 template literal feature that has been provided. So that's the next step. The next one happens to be as far as possible, try using, try implementing your code by using ES6 arrow functions. Um, it could be at with respect to whenever you're using callback functions, it could be callback function for your, for each map, find filter in any of those continue to use your arrow functions. And then with respect to, again, there are a couple of places where you should not be using arrow function. One happens to be when you're declaring a method inside an object, you should not be using arrow function. Why? Because we lose the scope of the, this keyword. So there are places. And if you're doing Node.js development, all your middleware hooks at the database level, you should not be using arrow functions. You should rather go on to use ES5 functions. So use arrow functions as much as possible, but just know the two places where you should not be using arrow functions. The next one that I've found to see uh, many of you miss out and a good practice that you can follow is using of your flower brackets around your control structures. Um, even though you're just using one conditional check or there's one statement that you're executing, ensure that you use your flower brackets around it. For example, if even though you're using, let's say an if condition, try to have a flower brackets 
around your if condition right try not to miss this out and also when it comes to flower brackets you know that whenever you're working with a block of code in javascript you would go on to use um, the flower brackets um, another thing i would say is while you're declaring try to do that on the same line that is the beginning of your flower brackets let it start on the same line so many times I see people uh, whose code would look something like this. Let me just bring up the Visual Studio code. Uh, let me share the entire desktop here. Okay, cool. So I find many of you doing something like this. Let's call this as test.js. So when you declare a function, let's say I create a function called as test, try to start your flower brackets on the same line. Okay, so try to start the flower brackets on the same line instead of doing it on the new line. You're just missing out on a lot of space here. There's like only one character on a completely new line. But if you're doing it here, it's a lot more readable and a lot more legible, right? So try to put flower brackets at respective places. Um, another thing is when you're checking for booleans, you can fall back on the truthy falsy concept rather than going ahead and comparing it with a true value. So what I mean to say by that is, uh, let's say you're doing some kind of a conditional check and let's say the variable value is already a true. Now you don't have to go and check is admin, is it true? You don't have to go and reconfirm that. We can just fall back on the toothy falsy concept that is available to us in JavaScript and then just do this. If is admin, if it's true, then you want to execute some piece of code, right? So that's also one more uh, clean code practice that you can follow. Um, apart from this, apart from this, I would uh, like to recommend all of you a, a very nice book. Uh, it's been written by a very, very famous software programmer. These are all people with 25, 30 years of experience. Now their experience is not even our age. Okay. These people have written some fantastic book. The name of the book is called as the clean code. So the author is called as uh, Robert C. Martin. And he's also very famously called as the uncle Bob in the programmers community. So he's gone ahead and published a book. Um, again, it's pretty old, but it is priceless and timeless. So whatever the concepts he's taught, it'll still continue to hold good even in the era of 2020. Even though in the book, he's gone ahead and taken examples from a Java syntax. Uh, again, you can come back and implement the same using JavaScript also. So this is not specific to, uh, let's say Java or JavaScript. It is written using Java as a language, but this is being adopted by programmers from all different backgrounds. Okay. So this is a book that I would highly recommend. Um, keep in mind, as I always say, becoming a full stack developer or becoming a developer is a journey. It is never a destination. And when you say do not limit your knowledge by the curriculum that has been defined saying, okay, this is all I have to learn. And that is it. It's not true. There is a lot of things that is out there. You have to go ahead and learn. And these will open up horizons into becoming better software developers. Right? So these are this, in fact, this book has influenced me a lot. When you look at the code that I write and the structure that I take, um, it's been imbibed in me having read this book a couple of times. It's imbibed in me and I follow most of the things that is recommended by uncle Bob. Right. So this happens to be seven tips that I want to share with all of you while you're writing clean code using JavaScript. I'll also have another series where I would probably also be doing it for um, clean, uh, clean code practices for React. And we will also have a section where we're going to be following uh, clean code practices for Node.